I don't understand why there's so much resistance. Good evening and Thank welcome to the uh, monthly meeting of the Hampton Beach Area Commission. Uh, may I ask everybody to rise with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let me uh, introduce our commissioners, um, starting with my left, Bob Preston, representing the Greater Hampton Chamber of Commerce, Mike Hausman, representing the State Parks under Dread, Chuck Rage, representing the Hampton Beach Village District, Ann Marshawn, our secretary, John Nyan, representing the Town of Hampton, Bill Watson, representing the De uh, Department of Transportation, Rick Griffin, representing the Town of Hampton, and Bob Ladd, representing the Hampton Beach Village District. We also have Jason Bassan, uh, Bashan, uh, the town planner. I will now open it up for a public comment if there's anybody in the audience that would like to speak on any of the subjects that we have shown on the agenda tonight. Uh, please come up to the, uh, to the microphone over here and introduce yourself, name and address, and your comments, please. Hello, I'm Lynn Larson. I live at 605 Ocean Boulevard in Hampton, which is, of course, north of Boar's Head. I'm representing myself, um, as well as I have uh, signatures from several of the other residents of that area. One is Pam and Bruce Barnaby at 587B Ocean Boulevard, um, Joe Titus at 587A Ocean Boulevard, and Ed and Pat Grogan at 599 Ocean Boulevard. Um, first of all, I want to say that all of us are very much in favor of extending this plan up uh, to Winnicunit. We think it's greatly needed, um, long overdue, and congratulations for doing all the work you have so far on that. Um, I have a couple of questions about things that may or may not be included. Um, one of them is the traffic hazard at the end of Winnicunit and Ocean Boulevard. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but that intersection is just the scene of many accidents and many near accidents. And I live kind of right in front of that. And I see constantly cars turning the wrong way into those two ingresses and egresses. I tried calling the State Department, uh, the DOT, and was not able to get any return of my calls, but I would hope that in any consideration of traffic um, master plan in that area that some consideration would be given to making that safer. I know I like feel like I'm taking my life in my hands every time I cross that interval because you never know what direction somebody's going to come from. They come from the wrong direction um, all too often. Uh, the second thing is that I don't know if the proposal is to extend a bike path up that way, but uh, somebody who enjoys riding, and I see so many people who really enjoy the recreation um, along that way, um, I would hope that I think it would be great if a safe bike path could be made available. It's really not safe to ride there. Uh, right now, and yet many people do, so I think that would be a great addition. Um, and I also just wondered if there is any um, consideration or plan for utilities in the area to move the utilities underground at the same time um, that all this happens. I think that would aesthetically be um, a great, great addition, because uh, these utilities are just so unattractive and um, and exposed. So that was what I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Those very good comments, by the way. I would just like to thank Lynn for coming because I've been discussing this with her as a plan, you know, as it's gone <coughs> along, and I've tried to explain to her a little bit, and I think she made some good comments, and I think that's the type of feedback that we're looking for. So we appreciate it that you came in. Can I just say one thing? Yeah. I really, if it weren't for 
Rick, I would not be aware of this meeting at all. And I sort of don't get the newspaper. I get all my news over the, the internet and the TV. And uh, I just wondered if there was a possibility to post some of these things maybe on the big signs that uh, sometimes other events are posted on mm -hmm. as you come into the town, like there's the big sign for the aquarium, water shortage, and so forth, because I do think more people would be interested, but uh, all the people I spoke to, nobody was aware of this. Okay. We did find her the site on um, Facebook. Yeah. And uh, so the other, the other are thing you still would, taking comments on that? Uh, we we will yeah but the i mean really the website uh the dot website is is the more active location dot website so there's, a, there's a page excuse me uh, mr chairman there's a page that's dedicated to this project good is there any other comments by the general public hearing none we'll move to um review and the approval of minutes in the september meeting Everybody has a copy? Page one. Page two. Page three. I would have just one add to the second paragraph where it says, Mr. Rose has assured Mr. Nyan that Mr. Liddy will continue as a consultant on this grant and I believe we talked, or I believe uh, Mr. Rose said, up to the engineering design uh, stage. Thank you. Yeah. On one thing, yeah, number yes. five. Okay, page five. Yeah, it said, uh, when we were talking about the sewer coming off the beach and how much money the beach is responsible for, I, yeah. My intent was the taxes, all the new taxes oh, the that were taxes. coming off the beach. Okay, fine. That was Thank on page you. five? Yeah. I don't know, it was section five. Okay. Anything else on page three? Page four. And that was the, uh, I believe, number five that Mr. Oh, okay. Preston was referring to. Okay. With those uh, changes to the uh, minutes, do I have a motion to accept? Mr. Preston made the motion. Do I have a second? Mr. Hausman, second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Um, abstain. 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 And abstain. And abstain. Three abstentions. Okay. Next, we, um, we uh, wanted to talk about um, the transportation grant. Uh, William uh, Rose is here from DOT, who is our project manager, um, and also Gordon Liddy, and uh, a new friend of ours now, Robin. <laughs> Robin, how do you pronounce your last name? Bowser. 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 Okay, welcome. Thank you. Welcome to Hampton. It's not my first time here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like your beach. <laughs> okay. Um, one, one of the things as, as part of a introduction before I ask William and, and, and Gordon to take over is that... Um, and this is probably more for the people that are watching on TV tonight than uh, the commissioners themselves. Uh, but if you all remember last uh, June, there was a discussion before we took the summer uh, break that we really needed to go and reach out to our organizations, uh, those organizations that we all represent, and to just kind of get from them any final comments about the, uh, the master plan update um, and the recommendations that had been made up to that point primarily on the four major locations uh, of the project, which would be uh, Ashworth Ave, Ocean Boulevard South, Ocean Boulevard North, and then north of um, Boys Head as the fourth component. We all tried to do that in the summer, but uh, it became an a impossible task because of pe people's schedules, et cetera. So we uh, kind of put it off until September. In September, we started to have some of those organizational meetings. We met with uh, the planning board here in town and also Rockingham Planning Commission. Um, and then we moved into early October where we uh, met with um, the um, State Parks uh, Dread and, and also the Hampton Beach Village District. Um, and from that, uh, we have now covered almost all of our organizations. 
We just have to go back to the Board of Selectmen with an update. Uh, they uh, were brought into this whole review study very early on, and we've gotten a uh, couple of pages of recommendations and thoughts from them. But uh, I think out of courtesy, we'll, Rick and I will go back and, and just give them a quick update. The only other organization um, which we need to touch base with, but I, I don't see any major um, changes or even major recommendations is the Chamber of Commerce. Um, they couldn't um, put me on their calendar until the uh, November 1st. Um, but um, as I said, I do not think at this point that they would have any uh, new or additional thoughts and uh, uh, comments, anything more than what we've already seen. So saying that, I thought it was my responsibility uh, as the chair to collect all of the information that people were were uh, commenting on uh, about the, uh, the four components. Um, some uh, were questions that I just didn't know the answer to, and I said I'll get back to you with the with the answer. Some had just additional comments. Some expressed uh, support. Uh, and some expressed some not so much support in some of the components. Um, a lot of people in the different organizations, including the planning department, the RPC, Hampton Beach Village District, state parks, um, all came and spent uh, valuable time in talking with us uh, on uh, these components. And um, all of which had uh, some good comments, some good questions, um, and so what I tried to do on their behalf is to kind of document, and that's what you see, what you received from me the other day is this multiple page document where it talks about the four components and if there are comments being made, if there's questions being made, et cetera. I then forwarded those comments and, and uh, questions to, to William, as I had promised him I would. Uh, I was delinquent in, in giving him probably ample time uh, to fully review, um, but uh, it is there. And, and my intent tonight is not to go over uh, this report word for word, question by question. I think what we'd like to do is get uh, uh, William and Gordon and Robin to comment on um, the general stuff, if you will, um, and then maybe ask them just as a follow-up so I can get back to these individuals uh, that have raised primarily the questions, if I can get back to them with a, uh, a, a bullet answer. Uh, and I think that would be uh, sufficient to them. There is a couple of things, however, in here, in this uh, report that I would like to address tonight, but I'll wait uh, until your presentation and then, then we'll go from there. Does that sound that all sounds, right to do? Sounds perfect. Okay. Is that all right with the commissioners? Okay. William, you wanna join? Do you have anything to? No, I yield my time to the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, William. Um, for the record, my name is Gordon Leedy, and uh, with me this evening is Robin Bowser. Robin is the uh, director of our uh, transportation systems group, which is traffic and planning, uh, transportation planning uh, for VHB in New Hampshire. She's got probably more years than you'd like to say <laughs> doing this kind of work uh, in New Hampshire. So as you found out at the last meeting, uh, my tenure at VHB has uh, ended, but I've agreed and, and VHB has agreed to uh, stay involved, for me to stay involved with uh, projects like this that I've had a heavy involvement in in the past it doesn't make sense to kind of change horses you know in the middle of in the middle of a thought uh, so I'll stay on as long as uh, as long as you feel you need me to and and uh, uh, assist with the transition into the engineering the the, the more uh, kind of detailed uh, design phase of, of this project um, so that's my commitment to you. Uh, this evening, uh, as, uh, as the chairman indicated, we did get a, a chance to review the, uh, the questions and comments that have come, come through. I guess at this point in the study, really what we're looking for is some direction or some consensus on moving forward with a more kind of detailed uh, form of design. You wouldn't be 
voting on anything specific in terms of you know the details of a proposal because we're not there yet um, but we need to get some kind of direction on a consensus of you know which direction we want to head with with the project and so that being said I'd also like to spend you know five minutes or so going over the north of uh, north of Boar's Head alternatives for the folks that are in the audience if that's if that's acceptable because um, I've got that all loaded up um, so maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll start that first and then sort of go back to the uh, go back to the uh, the preferred alternatives um, we did for the north end of the uh, of the of the study area, the expanded study area, we did uh, the same kind of existing conditions inventory that we had done for the rest of the study area. We mapped sidewalks and bicycle and transit accommodations, such as they are. Um, we mapped uh, the existing parking inventory, along with uh, whatever traffic data we could find from automated uh, automated uh, recorder. Uh, sites in the area. Uh, we don't have specific counts up at Winnicott Road, but we, we got a pretty good idea of, of how the area operates from that. And then we also mapped environmental resources. So we know, you know, about the same um, same level of information uh, short of the, uh, the, uh, the specific, you know, traffic movement counts that we had for the, uh, the southerly area. Um, and we added this area in red that's outlined in red from Church Street, which was technically the end of our uh, the end of our study area previously, up to Winnicott Road. Um, and what we found was, you know, this is this is the parking the the parking area. Uh, I won't dwell on all of that. This is. Um, the area between Church Street on the, I don't know whether I have a pointer or not, Church Street is up here, and then this is headed north for Boar's Head. This is the, the area that uh, where it narrows down at Boar's Head. And we did, you know, existing and proposed traffic counts. Um, and then as you get further north into your neck of the woods, um, we had identified several um, deficiencies, and the the existing deficiencies were that you know there are no there's no way to get across the road as a pedestrian. Uh, there's no sidewalk or si uh, crosswalks striped. Uh, the parking is kind of all in the center of the roadway, which is I think not the safest condition you could possibly have. Uh, the there's a grade condition between on the east side of the roadway where you have this kind of asphalt slope that goes up and it's not accessible from a, uh, an Americans with Disabilities Act perspective so those were some of the things that we wanted to address what we came up with was throughout this entire corridor there really is no demonstrated need for four lanes of traffic the traffic volumes don't uh, don't don't justify that. So by eliminating two lanes of traffic, we can we can provide other accommodations like improved sidewalks, improved uh, bicycle accommodation, bike lanes, uh, and improved parking. So what this is proposing is uh, parallel parking on both sides of of, uh, of a narrowed roadway, along with bike lanes on both sides of a narrowed roadway. Uh, and this provides uh, approximately 109 parking spaces in the area between uh, between Winnicunnet and uh, and Dumas Avenue, and then another 47 parking spaces that would be in a sort of standalone lot that would be separate from the roadway. We could potentially, you know, either fit a a uh, a uh, bathhouse into the the green space that's created by narrowing the roadway right now the roadway is out here and you've got this weird little kind of wasted space in the center by consolidating the the, the travel lanes you create 
a nice open space on the on the edges, and you could have room for uh, a uh, a bathhouse there. Or, or alternatively, you may have some minor reduction in the number of parking spaces that you might provide uh, to allow for for siting a, a a bathhouse in that location. Uh, we also have an alternative for uh, this. In, in both alternatives, we want to uh, fix the fix the intersection. This shows a roundabout at the end of Winnicunnet as it as it meets, meets Ocean Boulevard. Um, one issue with that intersection, there are a lot of issues with the existing intersection. It's kind of what it, it's a funky funky layout. Um, Kings Highway, as it comes into that into that intersection, is very very close. To the uh, the Winnicunnet Ocean Boulevard intersection, so it it would be not uh, it, it would not be uh, it would not fit within standards to keep that as a through road with full access at that location because it's too close to the intersection. So at the very least, it would need to be right in, right out, and I'll show you something having to do with that in a moment. But with a roundabout, since you have these entrances into the roundabout and the geometry of those is pretty specific, this is showing uh, King's Highway being <coughs> closed off on the, on the southerly end and you'd have to come out one of the side streets to, to uh, uh, access that. Um, this is, and we also would need to work with the folks that live on the, that are on the, the properties that are on the corners to ensure that access is, uh, adequate access to the roadway is, is preserved. Uh, but this would have, it would have the advantage of uh, not having a signal, not having a, uh, a, a standing queue there. You'd have a kind of a rolling queue and would be, you know, traffic operations would be, uh, would be improved. Um, the other option would be to do a traffic signal in that location, and it would be a pretty standard uh, layout with um, turn lanes and um, and signal control of, of all of the all of the traffic movements. You could, in this configuration, have Kings Highway come out to Winnicunnet Road, but it would need to be a, a kind of right in right out configuration. You, you wouldn't be able to have full access uh, there. Because of the proximity to the uh, to the um, to the intersection, the advantage of both of these is that it would provide significantly more green space in that area. You take the roadway and and make it sort of consolidate the pavement so that you uh, you can create additional green space. There still would need to be obviously uh, accommodation made for all of the driveways that are in that location because there are several, um, but. For that matter, it would improve things by getting those driveways uh, separated from the roadway. You wouldn't have people backing out into the into the main main line, um, so it would be safer in that way. So that, in a nutshell, is what we're proposing for the north end of uh, of uh, of the study area. Um, it it really boils down to whether a roundabout is a good idea or whether a uh, a traffic signal is a good idea. Uh, in either case, to answer one of the questions that was on the list, we could accommodate a, a, an additional bathhouse up in that area pretty pretty easily, I think. Okay. Um, so that is that. Let's uh, kind of move back to what we heard in the so. You know, in, in the broad scheme of things, what we heard through those comments and questions is that there is broad support for improvements to, you know, the area, but that uh, the preference from a number of parties, or I would dare to say most of the parties, is for a, to keep the existing traffic configuration or, tra or, or uh, lane configuration the way we have it today. So you would have two lanes southbound, one way on Ashworth, two lanes northbound, one way on Ocean Boulevard between Ashworth and the Ashworth Hotel. 
So that that that's what we heard. Uh, so speak up if if that's not the way people feel. Um, we also heard that uh, bike accommodation is very important. So um, and we could certainly if we if we had the uh, the two lane uh, one way southbound on Ashworth provide a bike lane southbound um, on uh, on Ashworth. Uh, I don't think it's a good idea to do opposing bike lanes uh, on Ashworth because then you've got one mode of traffic going a different direction than everybody else. So if it's one way, it should probably stay one way. Uh, but we could do also a one way, one lane, uh, one way bike lane on Ocean Boulevard uh, between Ashworth Avenue and uh, and the Ashworth Hotel, basically. Um, Ocean Boulevard, the southerly portion of Ocean Boulevard, is really uh, the it's kind of the nexus of all of the activity that we're we're you know all the issues that we're trying to solve. The the main priority in my mind is to make uh, is to increase the pedestrian accommodation from where it is today to make it safer. And we were Robin and I were talking before this meeting about you know kind of issues out there and it Robin brought up a good point, and that is that the pedestrian volumes are uh, the same or greater than the vehicular volumes on Ocean Boulevard in that section between, say, uh, D Street and uh, and Haverhill. So you know you've got 1,500, 1,800 pedestrians an hour, and they're all trying to be on a five foot wide sidewalk with vendor stuff out on, and you know. Everybody's got to make a living, but we're trying not to get people killed either. So we need to do something with the sidewalks. At the same time, you are constrained by having uh, the state park parking area on one side with a curb that needs to have some sort of separation between it and the roadway. You've got the roadway, including two lanes and a parking and uh, and, a, and a parking lane. And then you have this, you know, sort of eight-foot service area that's striped off, and a five-foot sidewalk. That's the amount of space you've got. So you can't have it all. <laughs> we can't increase the size of the sidewalk to what it needs to be, which is 10 to 12 feet, um, and keep the loading area, and keep two lanes of traffic, and keep the parking area. Let alone insert a bike lane into that into that mix. So uh, what our concept shows for the two lane alternative is to have is to eliminate 63 parking spaces between Averill and the uh, and basically the seashell on the west side of uh, of Ocean Boulevard, which allows us to have to be able to increase the size of the sidewalk increase the or uh, have a have a loading area have two lanes of traffic and have a bike lane we would propose to replace more than replace that parking with a reconfiguration of both the parking on uh, on Ocean Boulevard south of Haverhill between Haverhill and Ashworth as well as north of uh, the uh, uh, the north of the uh, uh, Marine Memorial. So the, do you have those numbers of the, the parking numbers? Oh, the ones from the yes, right here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you, you know, just to talk about parking for a moment, I counted the existing parking spaces and counted the proposed parking spaces and breaking it down into four separate uh, items, We've got Haverhill Avenue to the seashell. We've got a 63 existing parking spaces, plus there's a little bit of, of uh, 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 motorcycle parking in there, which you know we can replace. Um, we've got seashell to, to the Ashworth, 
we've got 79 parking spaces. That's not going to change under the under the proposed condition. We've got Ashworth Hotel to Church Street. We've got 128 existing, and we're proposing 206. Um, we've got Church Street to Boar's Head. We've got 280 existing, and we're proposing 349. So between Haverhill to Boar's Head, the difference is uh, 493 existing to 634 proposed. So almost a fifth, almost a 40 percent increase in uh, in parking spaces on the roadway. Um, that doesn't include the parking spaces at the state park. Uh, it doesn't include the parking spaces that are leased to the Ashworth Hotel because my thought was that those would be replaced in any case um, in, in kind. Um, and the only fluff is where we, where we put the motorcycles and how we accommodate them. So, and that includes the elimination of those 63 spaces on, on, uh, on Ocean Boulevard. So, you know, I understand that we want as much parking as we can have on Ocean Boulevard, but as I said, you can't have it all. And as long as we replace that revenue before we eliminate that revenue, then it should all work out from a financial perspective and operationally, you know, this is not a typical it, it's not a typical retail situation where people drive up, see a, sh a store that they want to go into, park in front of it, run in, get what they want, run out, get back in their car. This is a this is a destination. So, of the hundred thousand people that might be at the beach on a on a weekend day in July, how many of them are parking in those sixty three spaces as a percentage? It's like minuscule. So. I would submit to you that it's it's going to have an advantage of improving traffic operations, improving pedestrian safety, impro improving the aesthetics of the beach, um, with very little, very very limited downside. So that's my spiel on that. What? <laughs> Go ahead, Chuck. Go ahead. So we're. we're I, I'd like to see more parking. That's been something that I've yep. been fighting forever. And I love the idea that we're adding more parking. I don't like the idea of taking parking. Now, what has been brought up at this meeting a few times and at private meetings that we've had discussing it, um, the individual ones, is that middle sidewalk. Yep. That it's, it's just a waste of a sidewalk. I don't know. We don't need three sidewalks. We can have two nice sidewalks. We have the ocean. And then if you increase that sidewalk, I would like to see the cars parked, moved over, like we talked about before, and that still gives you that extra space. I think that the people, there is convenient parking, there's, there's inconvenient parking. People that come to the beach like to be at the main part of the beach. And that, I think, I, I really hate to see us lose any parking. I love the fact that you're creating more parking. Um, but I, 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 I don't see why we can't get rid of that, that middle middle lane of uh, that that is a middle sidewalk that there, no there, one uses there, I mean. there's a couple of reasons one is that if you have parking there uh, you need a place for those people to be you can't just dump them out into a travel lane from a safety perspective um, it's probably six and a half to seven and a half feet I'm not exactly sure but I, I think it's 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 in that range so even if you eliminated that entirely uh, it still wouldn't give you as much space as if you eliminated the parking the the issue is that you really need to have there's first of all there's a grade there so you know the parking is uh, maybe a foot in some places a foot and a half higher than the than the adjacent roadway and that roadway is going to go down when we rebuild it uh, likely uh, is going to go down when we rebuild it it needs to because of the property elevations on the west side of the road so that grade difference is going to be exacerbated so it can't be nothing and five feet doesn't do it for you so I mean that's just that's just the way that it is. So 
you know, you could, you know, maybe you could think about eliminating or reducing the uh, the um, the loading area, but I don't think you can really do that either because if a semi van gets in there for whatever reason, I mean, I personally don't understand why they're there at noon anyway, but, you know, stuff happens and the driver, it's not the driver's fault. He got stuck in traffic and he's there, you know, sorry, I'm here I am. So he's got to pull up and right now, you know, he's fighting pedestrians as it is. Um, and I mean, we saw that happen when we were when we were out there. There was a semi van that showed up, and you know, it was literally noon on a Thursday, and the beach was packed. And you know, so he just sort of inched his way up and put on his brakes, and you know, got out and started unloading stuff. And is there room in the what's it called the central park? What is yeah, it? CPA, central the parking? Yes, the CPA there. central parking to yeah. to squeeze that back a little bit. Yeah. It's already substandard. You're talking about the state park parking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's already substandard. I mean, it's I just hate it's to see 58 foot, spots. 58 foot Wait, days instead of 60 foot days. Is, you know, so we we already sort of snuck two feet out of that. Um, I, I hear what you're saying. I mean, maybe what we can do is what I can commit to you is that when we get better base information, we can you know take a look at at. You know, if we shrink the lanes, if we you know, shrink that 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 parking space or the uh, the the uh, sidewalk down, if we you know if we do this and we do that, can we get it so that we don't uh, we don't need to uh, we don't need to eliminate the parking? Because right now on the parking on Ocean Boulevard, there is a s small bike door opening lane i'm not quite sure what that is called yeah it's it's a little bit wider than a standard parking space would be and that's so that people aren't opening their but doors there's a out separate traffic. yeah, out in yeah. The traffic. um and but, you know i mean that's that was another comment with the with the bike lanes is do you want to have you know do we want to have it on the east side or the west side you know i guess it kind of it would be i think Unorthodox to have it on the west side. Um, it doesn't mean that we can't do that, but I don't know that that's the place that it belongs either. So living right on Ocean Boulevard, I'm sorry, John. Just oh, go ahead, go ahead. living right on Ocean Boulevard, I see a lot of bikers in, yep. the, mor in the morning. Yep. I don't see them all day, just because it's not the time. They don't go out when it's 95 degrees in the middle of the day. I, I see very little of that. So it could be on the west side because in the morning time, there isn't a lot of pedestrians. At one in the afternoon, there's a lot of pedestrians, but there isn't yeah. a lot of bikers. Well, and and it's it, it, I hear what you're saying, and I don't disagree. But the but the other thing is that it's very intimidating to ride when there's a lot of traffic. So that could be a reason that you don't see bikers out there either, because they're kind of taking their lives in their hands if they do, you know. So and they do ride in the the, the loading zone mostly. Yeah, yeah. Just knows that. One of the things, Gordon, that, you know, and I, and I think as other individuals have mentioned in my discussions with William, the, the role of this commission moving this project to the next step is that we, don't, we won't be taking, quote, a vote. Right. Uh, but what we would be doing is giving you some of our recommendations, yep. especially in areas where if we're spending our money for engineering design, to say, don't waste your time in this certain area doing an engineering design cost because it's never going to happen. Right. So I'd rather right. you spend right. our money in the areas that we think we could see uh, the improvement. So speaking on um, with, with Chuck, and one of the things that we, we as a commission have to constantly think about is down the road. So after the engineering study is done, after we have this project completed, we then have a great idea of now going back to whoever, federal government, to say we need $18 million right. to reconstruct Ocean Boulevard. Right. There are two partners, along with the commission, that pl will be playing a very important role in the support of that effort. 
Hampton Beach Village District, and state parks. Yep. So throughout this whole process of conceptual to engineering, we need to make sure that both organizations get a warm fuzzy. Yep. Not to say that um, one is better than the other, but I, I guess what I would think that we could do on this subject itself is to say to you next month when we do these recommendations uh, for, the, for the group is to say, all right, so on Ocean Boulevard South, we'd like to see the engineering design and cost for eliminating those 63 spaces or is there an engineering way for us to move the eight foot parking area on the east side, yep. take it and uh, you have 7.6 feet of sidewalk, that middle sidewalk, so it's almost an even match, and, and maybe looking at taking a foot or, or something away from something else to make that still an option from an engineering perspective. Yep. And then for us to be able to analyze that cost um, and then when it comes down to the final review, at least we're given the opportunity for state parks and the village district to understand what these two options could be. Yeah, there, I, absolutely, absolutely. And I, I think that um, because we can sit here and talk about what ifs like yeah. all, you know, yeah. all night, <laughs> frankly. But and none of us want to. <laughs> the, the, other, the other piece of this is that you know, it's more than just cost. It's more, it's the, you know, the, the process of design is kind of coming to, trying to say, solve as many of these problems as we can and in, in a way that, you know, kind of lifts the, lifts the whole area. So, um, you know, we may get to a place and I'm a landscape architect and a, and a planner. I've worked with engineers for the last 20 years, and you know we have differing views on what is acceptable all the time from an aesthetic perspective, for example. So you may get to a position where it's like, well, can we do it? Yes. Do we, should we do it? You know, maybe not. <laughs> you know, so when when all things are considered. So uh, I, I'm certainly willing to keep an open mind. I, I know uh, our engineers are as creative as, as anybody's and, you know, we'll come to, you know, what is, is practical and possible and, you know, we'll let, you know, we'll let the chips fall where they are. I, you know, my job here is not to shove something down right. in your throat. And that's fair, Gordon. That's fair. I, I, I think, Chuck, that would be a, a fair way and with state parks to kind of look at the two, yeah. et cetera. Rick, do you have a comment on this? Yeah. <clears throat> um, now, I did hear you say one thing, and I wanted to weigh in on it, um, about uh, the shopkeepers encroaching the sidewalk. The town of Hampton does not allow that. I, I, I understand I can guarantee that. you that. I, I and understand And especially that. when these sidewalks are finished, they're not going to be letting anyone encroach them. Right. So how big is the sidewalk, would you guess? About, is it going to be now? like a 12? No. Uh, it's, what, it's 12 feet. 12 feet. Is what the, what and what about uh, in the area where the Ashworth is? Is that still... It's uh, up by the Ashworth, um, the, uh, you have six foot sidewalks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, six to eight, I think is, is probably. And what about north of Boar's Head? North of Boar's Head, it would be a six to six foot sidewalk. Okay. I just, I mean, what, what we need to do is we need to have, uh, uh, a sidewalk that is that c can accommodate the uh, the utilities and signage and all of that because right right now and still have four feet clear uh, from an ADA perspective. I mean that's that's what the modern standards are. Sounds great to me. I just want to make sure I have the right uh, idea so that I can discuss it with the board. And if I can okay. find, <laughs> it's like my whole. I, I'm I'm just looking for uh, for a PDF viewer so I can so I can uh, bring up the uh, bring up the alternatives. I have uh, 
you know, north of uh, north of Borisad, I think we had we had six feet, and and up between Ashworth and the Ashworth Hotel and Borisad, I think it was is six to eight. Thank you. Yep. Okay. So, so. Um, back to kind of where we were. I think the um, only one that you have to cover yet is the north. Yeah, Ocean, Ocean. Boulevard North. Uh, we had, uh, I think there's broad support for, uh, for uh, changing the parking around to the easterly side of, uh, of, of Ocean Boulevard. Um, what we're showing as, you know, conceptually is uh, three lane, uh, two way with a center turn lane, uh, roadway with 90 degree parking. There has been some concern about uh, about bike accommodation. Uh, we were considering that bike in lane was the way to go. Um, we certainly can look at. Um, there's no real need, uh, in my opinion, for um, to have the uh, to have the. Uh, uh, Parking. Or there's no real need for the center turn lane in in this <coughs> section. From Church Street is here, so from there down to Borisad, we don't really have a need for a center turn lane because there's nowhere on the east side to turn. Uh, so all it would be there for is to accommodate turns into these parking areas, and you know those those turning movement uh, movement demand wouldn't be you know. It, it, it's not something that that is of great concern. So, what we could do is look at an option that, uh, and and then north of Boris Head, uh, accommodating, we've got loads of room uh, to accommodate bikes. So, in this corridor between Boris Head and Church Street, we could potentially use that center turn lane uh, space and do widened shoulders for for bike lanes. Uh, north of there, in the uh, in the Church Street area, um, that's not the right one. We we may be able to do something like in just in this this area between the Ashworth Hotel here and Church Street. You know, we need that center turn lane because. In the PM, if we're doing the one-way pair as it is today, there's like a quarter-mile queue waiting to get off the beach. So, we need that turn, that center turn lane for as long a distance as we as we can we can accommodate. So, in order to get bike lanes in here, maybe we could look at reducing lane widths to 10 feet in that location, uh, reduce or and also uh, keeping an angled parking scheme here with improved access so move that angled parking from the center of the of the uh, uh, the two travel lanes out toward the beach but keep it angled which allows it to be narrower and um, you know we would lose a few parking spaces but we're gaining so many that I'm not sure that it would make, make that much difference and we could keep the we could keep the uh, bike lanes coming all the way through the beach which I think would be a, a very positive thing that Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, and then we talked a little bit about no, uh, about north of Boar's Head. What I understand is that the that the uh, uh, the option of a roundabout may be an acceptable alternative in that location. Is that fair to say? Or I, I'll tell you that I have heard from the police that they're not in favor of the closing off Kings Highway. I don't know how official that is, but that's what I'm hearing. Okay. Um, I've heard several people say it. I, I'm not quite sure why that would be, but we could certainly have that conversation so, yeah. with them. Well, um, wouldn't, wouldn't also this be still like the other discussion points that we've had to where when it goes to engineering design, we can figure out what we can accommodate and yeah. what we can't. I yeah. think it's a good idea, but I'm, that's why I've heard the other. Well, based on the geometry yeah. that's out there, there will be some modification to the access to that end of King's Highway. Mm -hmm. So 
I mean, if if uh, if you know, like we did on Route 104, 107 in Seabrook, the 107, 107 we did a, a center median on 107, but there was a need to get emergency equipment into uh, New Zealand Road, mm -hmm. so we depressed the center median so that you know, and and did a tip down so that. Uh, emergency vehicles could go in. We could do kind of the same thing here, but normal traffic operations, uh, I don't think it's going to be possible to allow that to, to stay as a full, you know, full access roadway because it's like 50 feet from the main intersection. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but I appreciate the input. Yeah. Okay. okay, so if that's, it, it, that's kind of what we've heard and that's what you know we'd like to begin taking a look at okay uh, so he, here's what i would like to and, and there's just a couple of points you've covered a whole okay. bunch that were was in my report uh, so i appreciate that so thank you especially with the short notice um but there's a couple of things that i i would like at least a comment on okay maybe, and if you don't have the answer you know we can we'll, we'll we can get, get back to you yeah. um <laughs> But one of, one of the things that I think we talked about was the a couple of a couple of folks in different organizations mentioned: Do we have to be concerned from DOT's perspective, and therefore, from your perspective, do we need to be concerned with any standardization on public highways? on uh, standard sidewalk footage, travel lane footage, bike lane footage, any of those things? Well, you, you know, certainly there are standards, but I would, there, there's also the notion of context sensitive design. So we have a, a, a highly constrained corridor, yeah. uh, and it's constrained in different ways in different sections of the corridor. So. I mean, I think you 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 use your you, you want it to be as consistent as it can be, and you want it to meet basic standards. But beyond that, you want to make accommodation to the issues that exist in that portion of the corridor. So, I would say the quick answer is yes and no. I mean, you wouldn't. It's not going to be a consistent cross section all the way through from Winnicunit down to down to uh, Haverhill Avenue. It's just not. Okay. okay. Is that yep. fair to say? Uh, but I would add to that, but it will be an acceptable design standard. Right. It won't be consistent, but it'll be acceptable. Okay. My, my next question, and this is an area where there's been some discussion uh, in this seacoast area. And I would suspect that that discussion will probably increase over the next number of years. So, and that is, um, how do we answer the question when people approach us? How do we answer the question on whether or not any, that we, you, DOT, us, took into consideration for any future storm surge or any sea level impacts? And, and Coastal Risks and Hazards Commission has come up with a real scary report, right? A lot that I personally don't believe in, but <laughs> um, but I mean, how do we answer that question? Well, you know, there really isn't a good answer, and you know, the answer could be, well, we raise Ocean Boulevard by six feet. Well, that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, do we raise the seawall by six feet? I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe that's ultimately what is going to have to happen. But it, you know, whatever is happening is uh, is you know roughly seventy years away. So, and it, it's kind of like the you know it's kind of like the lobster that got thrown in the pot and you turn on the heat, you know, and before you know it, you're cooked. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't have a good answer, and it, okay. in a lot of ways, it's kind of outside of the scope of, of this work because we're talking about roadways. Yeah. Um, 
but you know, I mean, if sea level goes up six feet, then it, it's going to be a problem. There's no question about that. Okay. All right. And it's been 70 years since they did anything anyway, so. And then my last. <laughs> we're overdue. <laughs> and, and my, my last comment, because I, I, um, I, I don't want it to be left forgotten, and it's a, more of a comment with both DOT, possibly Gordon with your or VHB, and that is as we go down this project road and go into the engineering design and stuff like that, and we get everything done that we wanted to get done with the task order, and there's a little bit of money left, let's assume, that there has there been be a, <laughs> there has been a, uh, a good amount of input, once again, by individuals that we need as important shareholders to take the part of the master plan, which is, it is in the master plan with the recommendation of off-beach parking. And I know we're not addressing that within the scope of your project, but I guess I'm just making a comment that if we're down the road, um, I think that needs to be addressed if we possibly can. And, and I, I, I would just say this about that. I, uh, the data that we have doesn't say that there isn't enough parking. Mm -hmm. it, it does say that there is a high demand for parking in certain locations, but it doesn't say that there isn't enough parking. Now, is that going to change? It, it very well could change with redevelopment and, and, and all of that. Like if all of those parking areas get filled up with buildings, then, you know, it, 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 it is an issue. But right now, uh, there's probably, you know, a couple hundred parking spaces that go unfilled on even the heaviest use day. So, um, I don't know where they okay. are. I mean, so that you know that that's that's what the data show. Okay. Um, is there a need to increase uh, options for people to get to the beach? Absolutely. I mean, I, I don't think we should ignore it, but I think we're uh, we are I think we're years away from need from needing it. Um, well, so. I, I, I promised these individuals that I, yep. I would at least bring it up for discussion today. Sure, and, and can I just tack on to that? If, if there is a desire to go that direction with this project, it's a speak now situation because the, the way the scope is set up and the contract is set up, the money that's allocated to VHB currently is going to get used up. There will be nothing left at the end. And, that, and that's fine. Mr. Watson and I will find additional money down there. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, I told you he was a force of nature. Any any, <laughs> any comments by Bob? Yeah. Yeah, I got uh, three. Um, I find that North Beach cutting down to, to two lanes intriguing, the parallel parking on the um, the east side. You know, I, I, I like that. On the, the west side, I, I don't know how much parking you're going to find due to all the driveways that we have going yeah. in and out of there. I envision almost having, you know, a, a third lane so people can slow down to pull in because what's happening every time you develop one of these lots, there's only a driveway going in. So you're you're kind of stuck sitting out there waiting for somebody else to get in. So I, yeah. I think that could be a problem. Well, and in fairness to us, yeah. we, we had virtually no base information to work with. There are no plans for that section of road. Um, so one of the very first things we need to do is get some, some decent survey information. I mean, we're working off of aerials, which are pretty good, but they don't give you, you know, it, it's like one meter accurate. Even looking at those driveways that are there, you know, you got to slow down. You're going 30 miles an hour. Yep. You have to slow yep. down yep. to pull into that driveway. Yep. And I, I think that could be dangerous for some people. If you know, whereas if you have two lanes now, it's fine. You just go right around it. Um, the second part is on the, the south end of the beach when we were talking about the new road, and I went and, and looked at all the sidewalks. The sidewalks down there are deplorable, um, and so it, are the parking spaces. I think if when that area is reached, talking about from Haverhill South. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From yep. there, I, I think you'll you'll discover some parking spaces right I, now. That, I agree you know, with you. They're kind of hidden. You don't see them, you know, because uh, they're, they're dirt. They're it's kind of a free-for-all right now. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then the third thing, and it's like touching Social Security here when you start talking about <laughs> Michael's 63 spaces that raise two one thousand five hundred bucks a year, and parking in front of some of the businesses. Um, just thinking about thinking out loud, you know, if those spaces were not there, um, and that allow and that that middle sidewalk went away, that could be the bike path or something. That would almost, uh, you'd have a huge place for pedestrians to walk, walk down the boulevard. You know, you'd be redoing the front of your place to make that more intriguing for all those people that are there. You know, that would kind of meander down. Right now, you know, we're kind of trying to go in and out of people, you know, as you go down or walk around the cars. So I, I know you don't like it, but, you know, if you're talking about making a huge change, you that would do it you know it's 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 there okay so <coughs> thank you mr president mike no chuck any additional no i'm fine rick um i would just like to say that you know about the reduced lanes uh to i'm not sure bob which were you talking about the uh two North lanes Beach? If, if they went between down to, the casino, between the Ashworth and Boar's Head, yeah, well, or Boar's Head, or, and even so north of there, yeah, because well, I just you know now when you're pulling into I'll uh, just three three nine, you got two lanes and then you're pulling into this little driveway. It's a tunnel, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's okay if you're coming if you're you you see somebody sitting there waiting. You just go in the other lane. You drive around. It's the same thing as uh, people taking a right on. Yeah. So Church before Street. Church Street, you're talking. Or even all the way. You're going to have a lot of new condos coming up on the, the North Beach, and there's so many driveways there. I don't think you want a slow traffic going down. Well, down one thing is one reason why I like the fact that of having the less lanes, but I, we need to accommodate, like you said, also, is the fact that we hope this um, traffic does slow down. It's like a speedway there. Right. It is so loud you can barely use the rooms in your properties because the people riding up and down with motorcycles. So I think one of the big things that big improvements that we're going to have here is the fact that people won't be able to race around on motorcycles. Um, yep. So at least in the area north of Boar's Head, I think it's a big advantage to have less lanes. I understand down there it's it's busier. Well, Quite the, a little bit busier in that area. The, the traffic volumes don't substantiate four lanes. And you're absolutely right. What happens when you have a lot of pavement is people tend to go faster than, you know, maybe they should. Yeah, people that live around there feel that if it slowed the traffic down, we'd be all for it. Yeah, yeah. And it's safer. And, and it's this, less pavement to cross as a pedestrian too. Uh, so. I'm just going to throw this out. This doesn't have that much to do with it, but I noticed this in my packet that I just got for Selectman that somebody has offered, and Jason, you may know about this, to pay, they want to have a uh, walkway put from the Boar's Head area uh, over to the, roughly the Little Jacks area, and the guys even offered to pay for it. Um, you know, but I mean, that's how we get constant people that are looking, they're worried about crossing the street. Yeah. So yeah. this is going to be a big improvement. Yeah. And uh, did you see that about the guy from Boar's Head wanting? Yeah. yeah. I don't think he realizes that maybe he'd be wanting to throw some bucks this way. <laughs> okay. Bob? I just have a question from Church Street, not to Boar's Head, to Winnicunit. It was my understanding that the town was trying to discourage the amount of traffic exiting on Church Street and to encourage the flow of traffic to go farther north. The, Church Street, as you well know, is about the width of a small driveway. Yeah. And if, on certain firework shoots, it's midnight and you've still got traffic backed up trying to get out. So. Yeah. Well, I, I think that there will, if that remains the principal ex exit from the beach, which it sounds like, you know, we're headed in that direction, um, there will be, need to be improvements made to that intersection. It cannot be the way it is today. It's 18 feet building to building, and there's about 12 feet of pavement there. Um, that is not sufficient to accommodate the 
the traffic volumes that are required there. Um, so there, you know, that's the one place where I would say there's going to be property impacts. So, uh, you know, the alternative would be to provide, you know, alternative egress from the beach, uh, either, uh, well, I mean, but we've been down that road, and you know, I'm I'm happy to be where we are. If we can, <laughs> if we can, you know, improve pedestrian access, improve bicycle accommodation, uh, improve traffic operations, then you know, I think the project is a success. Are, is there are there going to be a few places where you know it's not the optimal solution? Then you know, perhaps. But uh, by and large, I'd say that. You know, it's a success, and I, I really do see Church Street remaining as the principal access to or egress from the beach. People will be able to go north to Winnicunit the way that they do now. Um, and you know, if you're smart and you know which way you're going, you know, at least the queue is not going to block your ability to do that. So, so there is a there is a middle a middle lane right that'll be turning. Right. Start, so that the third lane, so that should open it all up, and they're not crossing through a middle of a parking lot. Right, which is right. People going left and right through the middle of the parking lot is a disaster. Well, and you had people. I it could have been somebody on this board, but you know, talking about how you know you well, you just go down and you turn up through the parking lot, and then you have the right of way. <laughs> None it's of like, us ever do that. <laughs> <laughs> that was <laughs> Preston. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't mean to do you point cast to dispersions, but <laughs> so just to sum up this part of our meeting, um, you will, we will, as a commission, give you our recommendations—not votes, but recommendations—of what we see on these four major components yep. at our next meeting. At which point, William, you will then be in charge of taking this project from where it is today into engineering. Okay? Yep. All right. We can start talking about that yep. now. Okay. So. Gordon, Robin, thank you so much for coming down. Thank you very Appreciate much. Yeah. Always Talking a pleasure. You new looking forward to, uh, thank you. And Robin, looking we'll see forward you more to often, I hope. You will see me more often. Okay. We're switching roles, basically. Good. William, it's a pleasure all the time. Oh. <laughs> yes. Okay. All righty. We can um, continue while next on the agenda is the treasurer's report. Michael, any uh, update? Yeah, we did have some. We have a balance of nine thousand nine hundred ninety-four dollars forty-three cents. This past month, we had that six hundred and twenty-five for the FEMA grant, and two hundred and forty-four secretarial. Yeah, so we're looking at that balance. Did you get that in? Yeah. I did. $9,994.43. 999443. Okay. Yeah, I know. I should spend it. All right. Do I have a, uh, a motion to accept the uh, financial report? Motion made by Mr. Rage, second by Mr. Watson. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. Under old business. Um, I did run into Richie Sawyer, um, and I believe we're going to have that discussion with him uh, in our November uh, commission meeting with regard to planning for 2017 and uh, what some of the uh, thoughts are with regard to um, traffic control ideas that we could help um, provide as recommendations to him. 2017 Town Warren Articles. Jason, anything to report? Yeah, I'll give you an update on that. Um, so, um, in terms of zoning articles, as I mentioned at the last meeting, we have two uh, key uh, ordinances amendments that we're working on. One is accessory dwelling units, and that affects the town as a whole. Um, that's based on a new uh, piece of legislation that the governor had signed into law back in March of this year. And um, it, require, it requires all communities to allow an accessory dwelling unit, at least one accessory dwelling unit, where any where single any single family zone. So where single family zoning is permitted, you have to allow that by the ordinance. And we're establishing 
amendments to our zoning ordinance for that. Uh, the reason being is if we don't have those amendments in place by June 1st of next year, anyone can come in with just a building permit application and do that. So it's been a very uh, challenging effort. It's something that we've been with the, with the uh, planning board for several months now working on. And you know, the planning board will be revisiting again possibly next Wednesday to discuss, and public hearings on that one will be probably in December with the planning board before it goes to ballot. Um, another one is our flood ordinances. We're working on uh, amending our flood ordinances uh, consistent with a model ordinance of the state, um, State Office of Energy and Planning. Um, we're working with the Rocky and Planning Commission on that effort through a Tides to Storms 2 grant that, that we received uh, through them. Um, that's moving along as well. The board's been discussing that, and that will probably be at public hearing in December. Um, some of the key components of that are the consolidation of sections 2.4 and 11.6 of the zoning ordinance into one new section 2.4, making it easier to follow and everything more concise. But we're also looking at the possibility of perhaps a free board requirement, which is uh, elevating above the base flood elevation by one foot, two foot, or three foot. And that's consistent with the CRS uh, work that we've been doing. It's something the board's been discussing, so that might be a possible uh, element of that of that ordinance. So those are the two big ones that, that I would say really could affect the beach. There's some smaller, more housekeeping type amendments that the board will have at public hearing in mid-November. Um, those are more like uh, corner lot um, clarification, parking definitions, impervious coverage definitions, so things of that nature. Um, in terms of other articles, I spoke with Fred. There's nothing really in final form at this time, so there's nothing I can really report on tonight. Um, he did mention that one of the things they anticipate would be the Church Street Sewer Project would be one thing that would be coming up as, uh, as an article. So I'll just follow up on that when I hear more about those items. So that's, that's my report on that for tonight. Okay. Thank you, Jason. Yep. Any questions for Jason? Okay. Um, once again, I just throw this out. And I'll have this on the agenda. Uh, if any commissioner has anything that they would like to bring up as a an item or a project for the commission to address during this uh, season, uh, feel free to let me know. We'll put it on the agenda. Commissioner appointments. Um, we, as I mentioned last month, there are two commissioners uh, positions. One is commissioner at large. Um, I did have an opportunity to speak with Mr. Merrill, who's watching us on TV right now, um, and um, he would be interested in uh, continuing as Commissioner at Lodge, and um, his term ends at the end of this month, so I would, um, unless anybody else has any issues with that, I'd entertain a motion to uh, uh, reappoint uh, Mr. Merrill for one more year as a Commissioner at Lodge. Motion made by Mr. Preston, second by Mr. Watson. All in favor? Opposed? Dean, I know you're watching us, so congratulations on another year. <laughs> the other one is uh, Fran McMahon at the Rockingham Planning Commission. His term runs out in uh, in November. Uh, I was in uh, communication with um, Cliff Sennett, um, sent him a, a written request indicating that uh, his appointment is up, but we would like to uh, have him reappointed since Fran does want to stay on the commission. And so he will be bringing it to his board um, in November for a vote. Um, and uh, I suspect that Fran will continue on as our representative of the Rockingham Planning Commission. Any other old business? New business. Um, you all got a copy of um, the updated in-kind contribution report going from April 1 to September 30th. I broke it down as best as possible uh, in terms of the, uh, the different things that took place between those months, uh, including the meetings that we had, both our monthly meetings and other special meetings. Um, you will see at the end um, for that period, um, the in-kind contribution, uh, soft money was 5000 $265.84. I have copies of uh, this report if anybody needs one. Um, I also sent it the electronic version uh, to William indicating that uh, we will review this tonight and uh, upon review um, I will be seeking a, a, a motion to uh, uh, submit into DOT as um, 
our contribution for this period of time. Is there any discussions? Do I have a motion? Motion made by Mr. Rage. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Um, Hausman. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Um, thank you. William, the electronic version that I then sent to you, you can then take as a final copy. Um, and um, what I show so far since the beginning of the project uh, in terms of our uh, in-kind, both soft and cash, is now uh, $28,295.81. And that's not counting anything from DOT or anything like that. So I, um, I'm going to assume, unless I hear otherwise from you, that we're still okay with our in-kind uh, amount towards the project. Yes. Okay. Any other new business? Mr. Osmond. Yeah, I just have one. Uh, just announced that the Division of Parks and Recreation will be hosting our fall community meeting at the Oceanfront Pavilion Conference Room in the Seashell on Monday, November 7th from 5 to 6.30, where we'll have staff there will be recapping the season, providing information on, you know, ongoing operations and management and, you know, taking, having comments back and forth with, with anybody that, that's there. So, again, that's uh, Monday, November 7th from 5 to 6.30. Rick? I was just going to, uh, did you say anything about the 217 Town Warren articles? Yes, yes. Jason reported on some of the zoning changes so far. Yeah, so that's it. Yeah. And then there's one that's probably coming up that we all know about is the Church Street Storage. Yeah. Okay, if I, Mr. Watson. One new item. It's been a while. You've been quiet. I know, I know. So, um, um, last spring, department came in front of the board or each commission came in front of the board and we had a conversation that the town and the state should start talking again so um, in the next couple of weeks Fred and I and some of the staff here are going to start sitting down and um, beginning that dialogue again that we should have started a little bit ago great that is going to formally move forward okay. and as that moves forward then you'll uh, I'm sure you'll be keeping us informed yep okay Hearing no further new business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion made by Mr. Preston, second by Mr. Rage. All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. And Channel 22, thank you very much.